Okay, I know I put up two videos for binomial expansion, but I don't feel like they're good. So, I'm oh, sorry. So I'm gonna put in another one because um, I'm gonna, I just like this, so let's try this one. Okay, so binomial expansion, the idea is, so let's see, binomial expansion. And simply put, it's we're taking x, a, a binomial, and we're raising it to a power. Now, you know how to do, you know, you know how to raise it, you know, to the second power, the, the first power, the second power. Maybe you have on the FOIL method or other method, me, uh, methods of multiplying polynomials together. But we want a fast method. So let's, let's think about this. So we have x plus y to the 0. Well, anything to the 0 is 1. And we're going to assume that x and y are not zero. So it's not zero to the zero. This thing to the zero power is one. Um, and we have x plus y to the first power. Well, that's x plus y. Um, we know how to multiply x plus y squared. We get x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. Um, and then I want to multiply, and once again, this is, you know, x plus y times x plus y. Maybe you did the FOIL method. Okay. Um, but then we get to x plus y to the third power, and maybe the FOIL method's not the best way. Maybe, you know, we want to take something called the box method. So I'm going to take, so if x plus y squared is x, x squared plus 2xy plus y squared, and then... Um, multiply it by another x times y. Let me put the air conditioning on because it's getting really hot here. Sorry. And so I have, you know, x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. And then along the left side, I'm going to do x plus y. And then like, an, um, like a sheet or an Excel spreadsheet, I'm going to multiply it row by column. This is x cubed. This is plus 2x squared y. This is xy squared. Um, I have x squared y, um, 2xy squared, and y cubed. And it turns out when I add combine like terms and add everything together, I get x cubed, x cubed plus 3x squared y plus 3xy squared plus y cubed. Okay, and we can do this again and again. Um, you can produce on your own, but what we're going to see is that x plus y to the fourth ends up being x to the fourth plus 4x cubed y plus 6x squared y squared plus 4xy cubed plus y to the fourth. And maybe I'll do another row or so. On another row, I have an x plus, if I do x plus y to the fifth, I get x to the fifth plus 5x to the fourth y plus 10x cubed y squared plus 10x squared y, uh, 10x squared y to the third plus 5xy to the fourth plus y to the fifth. Okay, so first of all, let's take a look what we notice. So um, we notice, we notice a couple of things. We notice what? We notice that um, if a binomial is raised to the nth power, that means there's n plus one terms. So we see here, if it's raised to the first power, we have two terms. If it's raised to the fourth power, we have five terms. To the fifth power, we have six terms. So it's, so it's raised to the n power. We have n plus one terms. That's the first thing we notice. The second thing we notice is that is that as the x starts at the first term and descends, but the y starts at zero and descends up to the one. So let's let's jump to the three. We say we have x to the third, y to the zero. X is going down three, two, one, zero. At the same time, y is starting at zero. 0, 1, 2, 3. Same thing down here. x plus y to the 5th, x to the 5th, 4th, 3rd, squared, 1st, 0. At the same time, the path, the x one of y is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So let's see. x to the n goes to 0, and y to the 0 goes to n. 
Um, what's the last thing we notice? Another thing we notice is that the sum of the exponents is always n. It's kind of cool, right? Because what's like, let's take a look at this. Um, the n was here was 4, and so like 3 plus 1 is 4, and g plus 2 is 4, and 3 plus 1 is 4. Um, what's going on in the fifth row of this 5? Let's see. 0 plus 5 is 5, and 1 plus 4 is 5, and 3 plus 2 is 5, and 2 plus 3 is 5. So the sum of the exponents. Now, next. Okay, good. So we, we have a pattern here. So we, you know, so I ask you to raise something to like the seventh power. You can say, okay, I kind of know how the the terms are going. Okay. So the question is, that's not the only thing we see. We see all these numbers in here. Now let's write these numbers, the coefficients. So let's observe the coefficient. Observe the coefficients. That's the next thing we want to look at. We want to know we've expanded all these terms. And is there something special about the way these numbers? Well, let's write these numbers. Let's see, we have one. Um, let's put the let's put the coefficients. We have one, one. So all down here, these are all ones. Okay, let's see. So let's let's draw this. Well, uh, this so the like row zero is then one, one. Then we have one, two, one. Then we have one, three, three, one. What's the next row? One, four, six, four, one. And then one, five, ten, ten, five, one. This is known as Pascal's triangle. This is Pascal's triangle. There's a lot of like really interesting Pascal's triangle. A lot of interesting, like, like things about it. Interesting characteristics. For example, some of you might notice that the, the each number is the sum of the two entries above it. You know, ten is six plus four, and three is two plus one. That's not a coincidence. We can actually, in a more advanced class, we can prove that. A um, couple, couple of other things. For example, if I add up the rows, so let, we saw this one came from the, the zero row. Right? Like this is row zero. And so if I add it, I get one. But from row one, if I add it, I get two. Um, one plus two plus one is four. Eight, 16, 32. And you say, oh, you know what? The sum of the rows is equal to two raised to the power. It's kind of cool. Kind of interesting. Um, yeah. And so we can keep, so either, so, and you can keep, you know, going on. So if I ask you like to raise something to the sixth power, you go, oh, you know what? One, six, 15, 20, 15, six, one. So these are the coefficients when we expand something to the sixth power. Um, you might notice something else. This has symmetry, this triangle has symmetry. We'll need that in a second. We'll use that in a second. It's um, good. So um, if I say expands, okay. So let's uh, let's move on. So let's do an example. So I would say to you, I would say to you, let's see. Good. Okay. Let's keep that up there. Okay. So I could say expands, expands um, x plus three to the fourth power. And you would say, okay, this is fine. Well, because to the fourth power, I know there's five terms. So I need, I go to Pascal's triangle. Personally, just throw Pascal's triangle down. You go, oh, the one, four, six, four, one, that is five terms. One, four, six, four, one. Okay, I also know that, uh, so I know that the x starts, it's with x to the fourth, 3 to the 0, x to the 3rd, 3 to the 1st, x squared, 3 squared, x to the 1st, 3 to the 3rd, 3 to the 4th. I mean, I could put x to the 0 right here. And then I know that the, the, the 1, 4, 6, so let's see, 1, 4, 6, 
four, one. Let's clean it up and make it nice and pretty. So let's see, one, one, x to the fourth. Four times three is 12. Let's see, six times nine is 54. Uh, sorry. Let's see, 27 times four is 81. And three to the fourth, oh, that's wrong. 27 times four, let's see, eight, two, 108, I apologize. And three to the fourth is 81. So we've now quickly expanded this out. I now no longer have to do like foil, foil, foil. I can just use by no male expansion. Let's try another one. Um, 2x minus 1 to the third power. So you might say, well, this is a little different, Mr. Allard. No, it's fine. Just pay attention. The first term is the 2x. The second part is negative 1. So let's see. I know that I have 3. It's to the third power. So there's four terms. And I know from Pascal's triangle, it's 1, 3, 3, 1. Once again, I'll tell you that just get Pascal's triangle down and you're good to go. So let's expand this out. We have one, two x to the third, negative one to the zero. Remember the, the sum of the exponents equals the three. Let's see, times three times two x squared times negative one to the first plus three, sorry, three times 2x times negative 1 squared plus 1 times 2, 2x to the 0, negative 1 to the 3rd. Pay attention to the negatives. That's how IB gets you. Let's see. Let's clean this all up, make it nice and pretty. Let's see. We have 8x cubed, right? Let's see. Minus 3 times 4 minus 12x squared plus 6x minus 1. And now, we, once again, we, so we've expanded, we've raised something to the third power, but we have a technique. Now, where do these come from? Because I mean, th we can't do this all the time. We, we, we want it, this, this is the math, and we want to be more sophisticated. And we notice when in the, uh, we notice from the, the, the formula sheet that they bring back this idea of combinations from when, when the HL kids were doing combinations. We kind of sat for that, but we see that that you know that MCR. And so, what's going on? Those those coefficients. So those are known. So the coefficients are known as binomial coefficients. And for reasons that will be explained when we get to the probability in, in like a year, the idea is that this is probably not some raising a binomial, raising a binomial to a power is a, it has to do with probability, but also it's a binomial raised to a power, so it's a coefficient. Um, and the idea is the idea is that each of these terms actually is. Um, a combination, right? So, like, if we look at remember NCR, remember and shoes are, um, if we remember that, that was remember like you know N shoes R, and shoes and she yeah, and shoes R. And if recall, remember it was that formula N factorial over R factorial times N minus R factorial. Just quickly, the idea of choosing, once again, you had a bunch of objects, and toys, or and sweaters, or and people, and you had to choose a certain amount from there. We were called permutations order matter, but choosing is just like two people or two objects. And this was the formula, and it's kind of interesting. So, if we do like zero, two, zero, we get one. If we do one, two, zero, we get one, one choose one, we get one. If we do two choose zero, we got one. Two choose one is two. Two choose two, it was one. And so the coefficients from Pascal's triangle fit into this formula. Okay. So 
So let's try another one. So this is three choose zero is one. Three choose one is three. Three choose two is three. Three choose three is one. And so the idea is that these coefficients correspond to the coefficients of Pascal's triangle. So, so you might see the question. Okay, so here's the question of the book. It'll help you. Learn. Where's my eraser? Here it is. So. Oh, sorry. So the question is, the question is, find the a cubed b to the fourth term of e to the seventh, sorry, a to the seventh, sorry, b to, b to the sixth term in a plus b to the thirteenth. Well, well, how, is, it, is this question even correct? And you would say, yeah, Mr. Adler, this is fine. We know that, that a to the seventh, b to the sixth is a possible term because the sum is 13, okay? So I know I have a to the seventh, b to the sixth. The question is, what is the, the coefficient? Well, I don't feel like drawing Pascal's triangle, like all 13 rows, so I'm, I'm saying, you know what? I know that this is 13 up there, and it turns out, it turns out that the six goes here. Yeah, so this is the coefficient. So, so this is this is the coefficient. And for numbers this big, you find the calculator. And so that's how you're gonna solve 7a. Nice.